Are you interested in learning about Buddhist practice but don't know where to start? We'll have three different practices, three different approaches in today's video, coming right up. I'm Doug Smith of the Online Dharma Institute, that's onlinedharma.org. If you're new to this channel and interested in living a wiser and a kinder and a calmer life, consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell down below if you want to receive notifications when I release new videos. And for those of you who are interested perhaps in a deeper dive into the Dharma, check out my videos over on onlinedharma.org. When I say Buddhist practice, what comes to mind? You may think of a solitary monk off on a hilltop somewhere on a mountaintop or deep in a forest, meditating deeply for weeks or months at a time, something deep and difficult that takes us out of, way, way out of our ordinary lives into somewhere completely different. And we may, in, in that case, wonder whether it's really worth it, whether the effort is, is really worth all that time and uh, away from family and friends and the real world, as it were, from, from what we think of as the real world. We may wonder if it's really worth it. But what I'm going to argue in today's video is that, that, that this really gets a Buddhist practice uh, precisely wrong and indeed in a certain way backwards. So for example, if, if you want to, to learn how to get more in shape or learn how to jog or learn how to run, you don't start by uh, studying ultra marathons, people who run ultra marathons or, or people who, who are victors in, in strongman championships. That's a totally different thing. What you want to study is something much simpler and much more down to earth. And uh, so that's the same kind of situation here. So the question is, what is really Buddhist practice? Well, the first Buddhist practice is generosity. And generosity is a huge key to life. In the first place, it's friendly. It helps us make and keep friends. It helps out people who we don't even know. It helps out the wider world. It's, it's kind in that sense. It, it expresses our concern for other people. And it's also, or, and also the world, it expresses concern for the world insofar as we are generous to, to organizations, perhaps, that help the world in various ways. It also helps us to be less possessive, to, to hold to our own possessions with less force, to be more relaxed, to allow, allow ourselves to relax around our, our wealth and ownership of things which can make our lives so much easier in the long term. Now, when we think of generosity, many of us will think of donating money. And perhaps, for, for many of us, we're not in a place where we have excess money to donate, and being asked to donate may touch a raw nerve for us. But we have to be aware that the generosity is more than simply donating money. There are many, many ways to be generous. We can be generous simply by lending an ear, or lending a hand, helping out in some way, giving time to something or somebody. Now, simply being friendly to somebody, giving a smile in the right circumstance, is generous in its own way. Again, holding doors open, being polite to people, is a form of generosity, is a form of helping people out and, and spreading around the goodness that we find within ourselves. So this first practice of generosity, of being generous, can start simply by uh, you making out some time in your day simply to sit quietly or stand quietly or lie down quietly and contemplate ways that you can be generous or more generous. Perhaps uh, contemplate, think about ways that you have been generous already, ways that you can be more generous in the future. Whether it's with money, or with time, or uh, simply with your concern, uh, with a, a kind word, or a smile, these are all ways that we can uh, express generosity. And by, by spending time contemplating, we can help ourselves to expand this into the future. So that's our first practice. Now, our second practice is related to the first, but somewhat different. And this is, a, is, is trying to find ways to be more, ki more kind and compassionate. Now, uh, what do we mean by being kind and compassionate? There's many different ways we can understand that. But perhaps the, the foremost way in Buddhism is to understand it by, by being uh, non-harming, uh, to, to try not to harm people. And within Buddhism, 
uh, there are uh, a series of what's called the five precepts, which are five different kinds of training strategies that we undertake uh, to not to harm others or to be kind and compassionate to others. Uh, now, specifically, these involve uh, not killing, not stealing, not lying, not committing sexual misconduct, and not abusing uh, intoxicants in ways that make us more likely to do the, the first four. So those are the kinds of practices that we undertake, at least specifically, that we can undertake to become kinder and more compassionate to others. However, the, the general strategy in Buddhism of, of being kind and compassionate to others is more important, I think, than the specific ways that we understand these five precepts. It's simply that the precepts are a very easy uh, sort of thumbnail way to understand kindness and, com and compassion at their most basic level, but there are, of course, a, an infinite number of ways that we can extend kindness out into the world and we can extend compassion. And so part of our practice in this second practice is perhaps to, to again, sit for a while uh, in, in quiet and, and contemplate ways that, that we uh, perhaps can be kinder to others, uh, ways that we perhaps have been kind, uh, ways that we have been unkind or less than kind, ways that we may have uh, harmed other people, either inadvertently through our own oversight or, or perhaps intentionally. It happens quite often that we, that we intentionally harm others, especially it can happen if we're if we're not in a place of kindness, shall we say, if we're not doing the practice properly or not doing it at all, we may be uh, attempting to harm other people uh, quite often. And when we see that in ourselves, and when we can sit with that in ourselves, we, become, we begin to become aware that that kind of behavior is not to our own benefit either. It makes ourselves less, less happy and less fulfilled. Now, it's very, very important to note and to keep in mind that when I say this, when I talk about being kind and compassionate, that does not mean being nicey-nice. It doesn't mean putting on a false front and pretending to like things that really are not good. Uh, there are always times, there are always going to be times when we have to speak up against uh, abuse, when we have to speak up against uh, things that are incorrect, people that do things bad in the world. Uh, and uh, to do that, though, we have to, we, we should at least try to do it from a place of kindness. That is to say, we should become aware that when we speak out against ill or, or incorrect behavior in others, we do so with the right mindset. We don't do so from a mindset, at least as so far as we can, don't do so from a mindset of trying to harm them, but rather from a mindset of trying to help them, trying to help them become better people. Now, what does this really mean? How does this work? Well, a part of it is to pick the right words. In other words, only to use harsh words when they're absolutely necessary. Also, equally important, I would say, to pick the right time and place to confront somebody. If, if somebody needs confrontation, it may not be uh, really good, to, let's say, to confront them in public. That may simply uh, embarrass them and, and not make them very inclined to, to listen to you. Uh, so perhaps it's best to confront them in private or simply to put a, a word in their ear in private. There are, of course, an infinite number of different ways of doing this, and it depends on the case. The only important thing here, really, to keep in mind is to try to come out these kind of, uh, of cases with a mind of kindness. And that is to say, before you do it, if you realize this needs to be done, check in with your mind. Check in and see how you're coming at it. See how you feel. And while you're doing it, try, if you have the, the capacity, check in while you're doing, while you're with them, or while you're confronting them. And certainly after, after you've done this, after you have done whatever needs to be done, check in again. Did I do this the right way? Did I have a mind of kindness? Uh, or perhaps was my mind also a mind that was trying to harm? And this is not to beat up on yourself, because that doesn't do any good but rather simply to, to be aware of it for next time, so that next time this sort of thing happens, you'll perhaps be in a better frame of mind. Now, these first two practices that I've given you, these are hard practices. So we may think that the, the person, the, the monastic up there on the hilltop has got a, a really hard road to hoe, but just practicing generosity, kindness, and compassion 
can be a really difficult road for all of us in the quote-unquote real world down here with family and friends and co-workers, it's, uh, it can indeed be a lifetime of practice just there. However, there's also a third practice which is a central part of, of Buddhism, uh, which can be of, of, of deep help when practicing these first two, which is the practice that we know as meditation. Now, in Buddhism and early Buddhism, there's no single word for meditation. It, it's, it, it's a bunch of different uh, practices that, that use different terms and terminology that we in the West all sort of group together as meditation practices. Roughly speaking, these are practices that all begin with mental calming, so that we uh, practice ways of calming down the mind so that we can see more clearly, and then try to have uh, varieties of insight into the way we are behaving in the world and the way the world is interacting with us. And if you're interested in more of this and, and how to start a practice of meditation, I have another video, a recent video, up about uh, mindfulness practice, which I would highly recommend you, you take a look at next. It's right up here on the screen. And I hope we'll catch you uh, on other videos here on the channel. And meanwhile, all of you, I hope, will be well.